impacted head. If so it's, it's, it's rare that we have here uh, uh, two people who really uh, push the envelope, you might say, on, uh, on, 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 on free speech in terms of criticism of jihad and Islamism, political Islam. Uh, visiting from Austria, Elizabeth and uh, Bosch, who lives in the United States, yes. an, an, an artist, and, and t <laughs> together. That's the land of the free. Uh, Bosch, you're outspoken uh, even on Facebook, where people know it's you who's saying not just writing, but uh, but things that you say about uh, radical Islam. And Elizabeth, you have uh, you have uh, been uh, uh, convicted. How, how do you call it? Convicted in the court of law in Austria, uh, all the way to the Supreme Court, uh, for saying that Mohammed uh, was married to a six-year-old and consummated the marriage at the age of nine. And uh, I asked, among other things, uh, what do you call this if not pedophilia? And by just asking this question, if I asked this in Austria right now and somebody heard me, uh, they could report me to the authorities and I would probably have to go to jail for that because I was already convicted on on that charge so uh, the case is now so I was I was I appealed all the way up to the Supreme Court lost and the case is currently pending at the European Court of Human Rights and we're, we're awaiting the brief but it's so far it hasn't uh, happened and given the current situation in Europe makes you wonder why The truth, the, truth, the absolute truth. truth. But what specifically? Well, I just told you, it's it's Mohammed had a six-year-old wife and consummated the marriage at the age of nine. What do you call this, if not pedophilia? Uh, the court said that this was an excess of opinion. Mm. Mm. <laughs> madness, isn't it? It is madness. And it's, 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 uh, the charge is denigration of religious teachings of a legally recognized religion. And it's, an, it's in effect uh, a blasphemy charge. And the interesting thing about this is, uh, it's supposed this law this uh, uh, law is supposed to protect all religions in Austria, Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, you know any religion that's that's uh, legally recognized. But actually, you're only prosecuted if you talk about Islam. That's right. What was the penalty? The penalty was one third of uh, you know what I what do you call this? One third of the maximum sentence. And in my case, it was a fine of, uh, at the time, 480 euros, which is currently approximately the same, 400, 500 euro, uh, dollars. But it's not the money that's uh, important here. It's, I got one third of the maximum sentence. And I had never been convicted of anything before. One third for saying one sentence? Unbelievable. Uh -huh. uh, Bosch, when you hear this, what do you think when uh, the, the kinds of things that, that you say here in the United States? Are you concerned that, that this might catch on? And I, and, and I expect any certain day that uh, I'll be blocked from Twitter, from Facebook. I do. Uh, but as long as I have the free speech, as long as I have the ability to speak, I'm going to speak. I'm not going to give it up. I'm not going to pretend that we don't have it. It's like I pretend in, in a way I ignore a PC. I ignore it. That's how I exist. That's how my work exists. That's, that's why I think it's it's effective. Um, so yeah, I am concerned when I hear this. I mean, this is just it's a it's it's a European country, a civilized country, and she's supposedly being civilized. supposedly civilized country, and and they're they're forcing Islamic laws onto Europeans, which is shocking. And uh, yeah, I am afraid uh, because and also you know when it comes to Obama, but but also Trump. Trump was not. He was a critic of the Garland attack in um, Texas. He smeared Pamela Geller and all of us. So I don't know from which place we're going to be defended for this, but in terms of the powerful in Washington, uh, you have individuals like maybe Ted, Ted Cruz, who, who did praise the event and praise the fact that two jihadists were murdered there. But yeah, um, so long as we have the, the freedom of speech, we have to use it every single day. And we are in the middle of a hot war. It's not a cold war. That's why it's, it's different, you know, when they say about the uh, immigration problems. This is a hot war happening here. And for people who don't know, what's your ethnic background? Uh, Albanian, Muslim background. My parents were from Albania, born and raised here in the Bronx. Uh, raised with, uh, quote unquote, moderate Islam, but the, the, the Jew hatred, the hatred for women was a moderate, as can be. Uh, Hitler was admired in my family. I, that's why I call him uh, Islam's favorite infidel. 
Uh, and he also admired Islam as a, a muscular religion. Yeah. Hitler. And they, they were in bed with the, uh, who was the... Um, Mufti. Yes, the yeah. Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. Uh, who's, uh, who was, who wanted to expedite yep. the Holocaust. He thought the Germans were too lazy. Yes. Because they weren't killing enough too fast. And there was a Palestinian, quote-unquote Palestinian, after 9-11 who said, Hitler was great, but he didn't kill enough Jews, meaning he didn't kill all Jews. He had the power to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's their criticism of Adolf Hitler. If, if I may add uh, to the to the um, Hitler, uh, the information about Hitler, he actually is on the record for saying that if he were, if if the National Socialists weren't actually socialists, they would be Muslim. Yes. I mean that tells yes. you all, right? Yeah, he's on the record. Liked, you yeah, can actually look it up. He liked the hostility of Islam clearly. I mean clearly, and also in particular the Jew hatred. He admired he, it. Yeah, absolutely did. And that's why they were in bed together, Nazis and uh, the Muslims. You know, and this is two evil ideologies joining forces in a way that they would never otherwise. And they, we're but actually seeing hatred. the socialists in bed with uh, oh, yeah. the Muslims. Yes, we're actually exactly. see we actually see the socialists in bed. The in, the in bed the actual uh, the international socialists are right. now in bed right. with the Muslims, and uh, they they've once again joined forces. And I think uh, uh, Hitler is pretty happy with what's going on right now. He's he, this is exactly his dream come true. Yeah. So what is it you came to talk about here tonight? Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the the current situation in Europe, the the situation among migrants. Uh, you know what I what I'm currently witnessing there. Uh, I have I just showed uh, some the latest statistics from the Austrian government that shows uh, an incredible rise in the number of in the crime rate uh, perpetrated by so-called asylum seekers. And uh, that's what I'm going to, to talk about. And, and uh, you know, I was here in August, and I, you know, back then we thought the situation was bad, right? right? Yes. And, you know, you, you think it can't get any worse. And if you look at the, at the news, there's so many axe-wielding uh, um, uh, attacks yes. right now across Europe. Yes. Europe and Europe. It, was, it was actually a Kosovar who, who right? won, yeah, the one guy okay. in Dusseldorf, if I remember correctly. Okay. And, of course, he is um, he's mentally ill. Of course. Mental, right? Mental illness. That's what it yeah. is. Yeah. It's not Islam. No. Also, never. one thing. As you mentioned, though, they're starting to report these stories, which is a rare thing, which is a new thing, which is pretty extraordinary. Though not, so truth, not in Germany. Okay. Not, not in Germany. Okay, in Austria, they are, but not in Germany. Well, the truth will out eventually. <laughs> the truth will out. Of course. It has of to. Of course. So, thank you. What's the, the, the main lesson that you'd like to leave to North Americans, especially now when, when we have every uh, uh, entertainment program making uh, fun of... Uh, Trump's trying to restrict immigration from Muslim countries as, as being racist. What's the, the reality of what's happened through this Muslim immigration into Europe? <laughs> the reality is that I have to be afraid uh, that one day my daughter will come home from school and, and she was raped. Mm. That's the reality. She, that she would be. That she would be. She hasn't yes. been so far. No, she yeah. has not been. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that's my concern because the 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 rate the rates the rape rates uh, are are staggering and it's always gang rape, yeah. uh -huh. always gang rape. Just you know, by way of example, uh, just uh, two weeks ago before I left uh, to come here, uh, we had an Iraqi gang rape. That was prosecuted a 28 year old german teacher who uh, was gang raped on new year's eve in vienna and uh, the it, absolutely amazing the stories uh, the lies that these perpetrators told the judge and it was it was uh, you know pure luck or maybe bad luck for the perpetrators the judge did not believe a word they said Interesting. they said you know she was drunk, we were drunk, uh, we don't remember, she asked for it, um, and they got a total of 90 years in prison. And how but, many were there? Uh, I think six, okay. six or seven, but this is going to cost the Austrian taxpayer a total of 4 million euros. So approximately 4.2 million US dollars, taxpayer's money. Here in Hollywood, there's been a taboo against uh, speaking conservative uh, ideas and especially opposing uh, jihad or Islamism. Um, what's the risk you feel that people will uh, encounter now based on what happened to you 
Will, will uh, uh, free speech be shut down? You mean here in the United States? Anywhere in, in Western... Well, uh, I mean, we all know what's happening in, in, in Western Europe. People are being rounded up. People are being uh, convicted. prosecuted, convicted. Some even uh, go to jail. A German satirist has just been jailed mm. for 20 months oh for publishing political satire. And he marked it as such. 20 months. 20 months yes. Ago. Yes. Like absolutely. Yeah. He's a criminal. And, uh, you know, th that's what's going that's what's co going on in Europe. However, you have got the Constitution in the United States and you have Trump. Again, I'm warning you, just because Trump was elected doesn't mean that everything is well. OK, don't think uh, that Trump is going to be fi going to be able to fix everything. Because so much comes from social norms and social pressure. Socialism. Okay, shutting down free speech. I mean, one of the goals of socialism mm -hmm. is to shut down free speech. And how do you go about it? You start, you, you, you have it that's here in Hollywood. It's really put that way, but that's absolutely true. It's really put that way, but it's absolutely true. That is one of their goals. Shut it down. Yeah. Shut people up. Shut down the truth. That's what, yeah. that, 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 that's what PC is. But PC is basically organized war on truth. Yeah. And just get it out of the way. And uh, shut down individuals. And uh, now Obama and Jarrett and uh, even Clinton, are, th are they uh, surrendering the mantle, the, the gavel to uh, uh, influence on society? No, absolutely not. You, you mean, I mean, they're still working behind the scenes to try to undermine us. Are they? And absolutely. Undermine Trump, undermine the country itself. Obama has been at war with America ever since he was, uh, you know, in his 20s, 30s. Yeah. Yeah. And he is continuing his war. And he's and, got the community uh, organizing in, in place. He has, he has everything. Now. Yeah, yeah. Not, not that. Not that. That when he was president, he had more power then. But now he has more power as a community organizer. That no, he's probably the most commu powerful community organizer in history, and he is working it. But he's quiet about it. If you if you notice, he's not on TV, so he's doing even worse right now. If you notice, I mean, he's just we don't see him, we don't hear him. So it seems like he's not doing anything. Oh, he's doing a lot, and we know he is also. And does he have uh, operatives working on his behalf within the government still? The guy's been there for eight years. Imagine the damage he's done behind the scenes that we never even saw. Imagine the, the corruption involved. And it's, it's, it's going to bubble at a certain point where people will start talking about it, writing about it a little more than they are now. So, yeah, it's a dangerous time. we got a, an American, anti-American, pro-Islam, you know, ex-president at war with the country still.